Hey, this is Damon with Haggerty and Will It Run? And this is a 1970 Dodge Challenger TA 346 pack. Come on, how don't be fussy. Okay, so I know the car has been sitting here since 1997 because that's when this barn was built. Happens to be a friend of mine. And uh, it wasn't necessarily on the road even at that point, but they did bring it in here. Let's see what we have here. So again, 340, six pack. It's gonna have uh, three Holley carburetors. Now these, cars were put together to compete in the Trans Am series and SCCA series stuff. The street version of this were 340 cubic inches or 339, but when they were on the racetrack, they were de-stroked to run 302 so they could compete in that level with the Chevys and the Fords. All right, well, let's get the uh, little window over here and the Yamaha out of the way and I'm grab my tools and well, go through all of our steps. <clears throat> All the things we, all the things we find. All right, so we got stock seats, console. Been a mouse in here. Eighty-four. So there we go. Hasn't been on the road since 1984. The last time this car was on the road, the Tigers won the World Series. How's that? How's that for a reference? Well, Ben, I think we got a work cut off for us today. To get things started here, I'm going to kind of go through, double check our fluid levels, obviously check oil, make sure there's some oil in it. Now, we're not necessarily going to start this up and run it forever. So I know there's a lot of always a question of, hey, you didn't check the coolant level. I'm going to tell you what right now, an engine will run for two, three minutes with no coolant in it. I'm not going to advise going down the road that way, but, you know, it's not the end of the world if there's no coolant for that. Let me specify for that. Um, but we'll make sure we have some coolant in there, or at least check it. We have belts and stuff on it. In the past, we've had some issues where the, um, you know, the water pump was seized up. So not much point in having coolant if the water pump is uh, seized up. In this case, we'll find out here in a minute. I'm also going to put a breaker bar before I get anything going and make sure I don't have something uh, froze up as far as the engine won't turn over. Because if the engine won't roll over on its, you know, on a mechanical side of, of things, then well, that's a no-go. It won't run if it can't turn over. Let's put our breaker bar on the crankshaft. But this is always a hoot with a fan in the way. You know it never just hit it the first time, right? There. Okay. Now, nah, Miner. All right. Let's see what we get. Oh, that's a good sign. So I got a water pump spinning, I got an alternator spinning, power string pump, and a crankshaft. Cool. All right. Step one. Oh. We better cut that out. <laughs> that hurt me. It didn't hurt the car, but it hurt me. Meaning, I don't want to do that. Okay, step one, done. Throw tools on the ground. Oil, oil, ooh. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. Check oil this side up. Well, there we go. There's a start. We're doing it right. It's got all kinds of it. It's right at full. Okay, just for the sake. Make sure we show this. Yeah, there's some fluid. It's wet on top. Look at that, see? So there's some coolant in it, which that's a good sign because if there's no coolant in a radiator, you may have a big leak. It's been sitting and, you know, it gets cold here, like minus cold. So you run the risk of freezing a block. With coolant in there, obviously you have uh, antifreeze in it. It's in the block. It shouldn't freeze. So we shouldn't have any issue that way. At this point, I want to pull 
start pulling plug wires and um, let's get some oil squirted down the holes. Okay, so all our spark plugs are out and they were all firing. They were definitely all firing rich, uh, which yeah, not to be expected, I suppose. But uh, good sign is, is nothing's broke. Doesn't look like anything smashed into anything. So all the mechanics of the engine should be fine from this, this indication. And like I said, once the spark plugs are out, I went through and I added some uh, penetrating oil put that down into each one of the cylinders, spray a bunch in, it's okay. And uh, now it'll sit a little bit while we're waiting and hooking up the electrical. It'll work in and creep into those rings. And then uh, we're gonna hit it with a starter and see what happens. You saw how this thing works. I'll give you the little secret and how to make it. All you do, take a lighter. It'll have a single hole in the bottom end. Take a lighter, heat that up, push it against it, seal it off completely. Then take a needle, heat that up red hot and just Push holes through the plastic and boom, you'll have one of these. Whoops. So I'm getting ready to spin this over. I'm going to pull the negative wire here to the coil. That way I'm not going to be sending spark down and it'll just be happier that way. All right, let's get our battery down here in the hole. I got my terminals cleaned up. Now, one thing, word of caution, be very careful here, because you notice this is a red wire. Typically, positive terminal on your battery is also red, similar to this cap. However, this red wire goes directly to ground. So if I hook this up as positive, I'm gonna be a dead short, battery's gonna be hooked up backwards. Things don't like it that way. So. This is our ground. I'm going to hook this up last. This is our positive. This is going to the solenoid and then down to the um, starter. So I can hook this up onto there. That little crack was one of them nuts. The shells from pine trees. Okay, now let's see what we get here. Still got a, good, got a little bit of a draw somewhere, but. I see no smoke. That's a positive sign. I'm gonna have Alan reach on in there and do me the favor of hitting the key when I yell go or something along that lines. So all we want to do, Alan, is just spin this over a few times and uh, kind of watch things. Oh, that's that beautiful sound of a, of a Mopar starter. She's spinning. Yep, do it. More? Yep, more. Sounds just like brand new. Okay, and we got we got compression over here because we're seeing some of the oil from the cylinders pushing out, so that's good. That means that piston's going up and down. And uh, kind of the same thing over on this side. All right, nice. So I guess let's hook the coil back up, go for the gusto and see if we have any spark in any one of these. Uh, I'm gonna throw some fresh plugs after it though. There's no sense of putting those back in there. And you know, I left my wire brush at home for those. Whoops. Okay, don't hate me for using NGK plugs over our champions. Uh, these were readily available. The champion was not. Now, if I wanted to just jump in and put the suspenders on with the belt, I would pull the cap, inspect the cap, do all that stuff. But you know what? I have a plug in my hand, all the wires are off, and I can very quickly check at least spark on one of them and then go from there. If I got to dig deeper, I dig deeper. Big deal. Okay? Alan, I'm gonna have you spin that over again, uh, but I'd better hook up the coil wire because I'll be cursing myself, wondering why I don't have any spark. That's right. Hopefully I can get this to thread on. Okay, let's put one plug in here. And I would certainly hope this valve cover bolt has a good 
deal. Go ahead and spin her all around. Yep, keep going. That's good. We have spark. So plug, plugs are in, wires are on, and uh, now I need to address my fuel situation here. Uh, I would love nothing more than to take the holly carburetor bowls off, clean them up, and put them all back on. But as you notice, uh, doing that is kind of ugly. Now the other thing we need to point out and notice is, yes, this is 100% a six-pack original car, um, but it is not running on all six packs it's running on two uh only the center carburetors uh currently hooked up and i'm not going to change that i'm going to run it off the uh, front two or i'm sorry i'm not going to change that i'm just going to run off the the center um, because there's no fuel line runner here none up here actually missing a, a port to it um and the throttle linkage is only hooked up to the center so not a big deal uh, that way I don't have to worry about adjusting these either. It's just going to, it will it'll suffer maybe a little bit of air, but we'll be okay. These are progressive linkage anyway. So what I will do is make sure that's tight. Just because that will cause a leak if it's loose. Okay, so everything's going to run off the center. I do not want to start off with running fuel up through the gas tank, regardless of what's in there or what condition that may be in. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to disconnect the cracked fuel line. Not on the fuel line there, anyway. Yeah, this, is a, this is a makeshift at some point here. In fact, let's get this completely out of here. It won't take much to cut that line there. Because it's cracked off. We'll hook our hose up to here. Fuel it with an electric fuel pump. And cross our fingers that we don't have any leaks in the carburetor. Just, again, so I don't have to pull them off. Not a big deal if I have to, but if we don't, one less thing. Here we go. Okay. Fuel lines attached. Ready for splashing? Mm -hmm. Hasn't picked up yet. There it is. Okay, I can hear fuel coming into the carburetor bowls. Oh, there she is. So it means my vent's not closing. Which, for right now, it'll be fine. Because we'll run it off the bowl anyway. There's lots of fuel in there, from a bowl standpoint. We have uh everything ready now we do have a little issue with putting fuel in the float sticking so we're going to baby this a little bit just to get it to run and fire and then we'll take it whatever that next step is going to be um i am not drinking red bull but red bull can is working perfectly for my gas can because well i left that at home so with that let's add a little bit of fuel here to it okay and I'll run the throttle. Ben's on the ignition. All right, Ben, go ahead. Okay, one second. Let me shut the choke here. Go ahead. Yep. Good. 
hold on. That last kick where the starter kicked out, yep. that's when it, it fired right there. So yeah. it, it, it finally got a little bit of, got enough fuel to everything to, to try to light off. <clears throat> well, let's let that, let's let that hang for just a minute. Let that starter cool off just a hair. Boy, don't you love the sound of them beautiful Mopar starters. They always got a good whine. You can, you can hear them across the parking lot. All right, go ahead. Told you. Oh yeah, look at that. A little of fresh exhaust going out of the back end, out the door. Awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get a little bit longer. We'll get as much in it as on it. But... Okay. All right, go ahead. Oh yeah, she's gonna purr. It, the choke wants to work. Let's get, we're gonna have to pull that center carburetor out. Um, and I guess since all the linkage isn't hooked up to anything else, that's a good thing. This thing's driving out of here. It's going out that door. I know it, I can feel it. And that thing sounds so good. Boy, I'm glad that fired like that. I was beginning to get a little worried because it's like, whoa, man, why come when it's not firing yet? And then, wham, just like that. Okay. Now, we'll take this out of here. Well, that was easy. Yeah, I guess we'll set it right there. Now, this will come out of here. Okay. So, and actually, I guess I could have pulled that right off. After I pulled that front carb, I could have just pulled this bowl off, but... This way we got it out where we can see it better. Pull this out, drop this off, clean it up. Maybe we'll find a piece of cardboard or better yet, a towel. Okay, so I'm gonna call it round two startup. I fixed the carburetor leak issue and cleaned the carburetor so there's not so much gunk in it. And I still have my electric fuel pump um, on and you can hear it running actually currently. So we're running good fuel out of the boat tank into the carburetor and then you'll see we have another tank just sitting here. We put some, uh, just some general fuel in the tank and going to see if the mechanical pump will pick up fuel and kind of flush the lines out in the bottom of that tank while we let it idle and, and warm up here a little bit. Then uh, based on what we find out there, we'll add fuel to the tank and make this thing move. All right, John, hit the key.
close. All right, a little bit more. That's enough to see if it pump was working. That'd be a big no. Put a little air in this right front tire and see if it should move. There we go. That's pretty slick. This is where you walk in, go in the house, have a drink, come back out. <laughs> I'm with you. I think that's perfect. This thing produces some heat. This line's hot. All right. Okay, so we had to make a little plan B here. I can't get the mechanical fuel pump to draw anything from the tank at this point. I still have it kind of hooked up here as a breather just in case it decides to wake up. But I do have my uh, electric fuel pump routed up here and I'm gonna run my line up underneath the hood so it doesn't pinch anything and yes we're gonna put the gas tank in the passenger seat floorboard so we can start this up and move it I want to start it and move it I'm gonna drive it out that door there that'll hold it enough to move it Bring our fuel tank inboard. Not recommended for any kind of long distance driving folks, but for what we're doing, perfect. But before we, uh, I hop in and slide across the console cause it's, I'm not that skinny to hop through here. The window's not down to Bo Duker in. Let me uh, make a little bit of spot here. Because driving in a submarine is not all that fun. All right, once I slide in and get comfy. Okay. Gonna be the good way to do this. Heck yeah. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here we are. You can see it is not the same day because while well, we're in Michigan, we've transpired over a weekend and now it's 30 degrees instead of 82. But needless to say, we're on the Challenger. We had a little hiccup with our wiring is what we're getting at because we went from starting up and running to no power at all, like not even the headlights are turned on. So diagnostic wise, I've kind of narrowed things down to, well, first place it's getting power to is right here. And as you can see, everything's kind of crusty and whatnot. So I'm going to change out the relay <clears throat> for one. 
just to make sure that that's like not an issue at all. I'll clean up all the wires, <clears throat> put them all back on. I am gonna replace this fusible link. It's kind of a hodgepodge in here already anyway. And uh, make sure we're getting full power in. That should remedy our problem as far as no power. Then it should start up and run. At least the headlights will come back on. That will be a huge step. And uh, we'll take it from there. So I went through, put a new relay in it, got the battery hooked back up, cleaned up the ground, cleaned up all the positive wires going through that relay, and uh, now we're making solid connection. My headlights turn on and uh, the dash lights come on. So now we're going to give it a little sip of Red Bull and wake it up uh, with Ben in the seat, turning the ignition. We'll get it warmed up and then I'll climb on in and drive her up, or Ben will. Maybe I'll run the camera. Got happy with it. Okay. All right, now let's pile in. Now we're fired up. Got a little bit of heat in it. Should fire right back up. Right, here we go. That's better. Come on now, don't be fussy. We got it running. It's running. It wasn't running before. Ah! Ah! Come on. It doesn't want to run with the hood down. All right. Come on, baby. Give it a shot. I'm gonna try to go at least add a little bit of an angle towards John there. Oh, it was doing it. It won't draw enough.
Come on, baby. Red Bull. Red Bull. What fuels you? Gives you wings. Gives you wings. Oh, that's right. Sorry. That's VP that fuels you. So using a little of our potential energy, converting into kinetic energy, we manage it back right down that hill with no problem. But what you saw is that this starts up, it runs, and it moves. So when we drove it, that was the task. And you know what? <laughs> this thing being out in the light now after X amount of years, I think it needs something a little more and deserves a lot more attention. So, who knows? Maybe you'll see this again, like sooner than later. Go get in the shop, go get some work done, and you know what? If you don't have a project, quit dogging on people that have a bunch of them. Maybe they need help. Go ask them. See ya.